night 339. Morning now, Dawn shares I broke off when, from what she had been allowed to say then when it was the 339th night. She continues, I have heard a portion of the king that the girl told the Coheed that she had been wrong. So how? she asked. And who has wronged you? Your son brought me, bought me for 10,000 dean durhams, she told him, intending to give me to you as a present. But your wife sent him another 10,000 durhams and told him to hide me away from you in this apartment. Goodness. See how she's stuck? Mm -hmm. Ask me to grant you a wish, said the Khalid. She replied, I wish that you would spend tomorrow night with me. If God wills, he replied, and then he left her and went along. The next morning, he went to his council room and sent for Abu Nuwas, and then, and when Abu Nuwas was not to be found, he sent his chamberlain off to make inquiries about him. This man found Abu Nuwas in a wine shop being kept as security for the payment of a thousand dirhams that he had promised to spend on a beardless boy. When the chamberlain asked what had happened, Abu Nuwas told him about the pretty boy in the thousand dirhams. Show, me, show him to me, said the chamberlain. And if he is worth it, you are excused. Wait, Abu Nuwas told him, and you will see him immediately. While they were talking, the boy came up to them wearing a white robe on top of a red one, beneath which was a black one. On seeing him, Abu Nuwas, sighing deeply, recited the lines. He appeared in a gown of white with languorous eyes and eyelids. I said, you passed by, but gave me no greeting. Although a greeting would have contented me, blessed be the one who clothes your cheeks with roses and he who creates what he wishes with none to oppose him. There is no need for argument, he said. My Lord is marvelous in his creation without flaw. My robe is like a face and like my fortune. White unto white unto white. When the boy heard this, he took off the white robe, and when Abu Nuwas saw the red one that he wore beneath it, he recited even more admiringly. <clears throat> I saw in a robe colored like red and among its an enemy of thou called a friend of mine. I said in wonder, You are a full moon, but you have come in a surprising guise. Is it the redness of your cheeks that has caused it, or do you dye it with the blood of lovers' hearts? He said, The sun gave me a shirt that it had only just made when it set. My robe, white wine, and the color of my cheeks are red anemones, animals, one set against the other. When Abu Nuwas finished these lines, the boy took off his red robe and then was left dressed in black. When Abu Nuwas saw him, after looking at him again and again, he recited, He came out in a black robe, appearing to God's servants in the dark. I said, You passed by, giving me no greeting, pleasing the environment, envious in my enemies. Your robe is like your hair, and like my fortune, black unto black unto black. When the Chamberlain saw the state that new Abu Nuwas was in and his infatuation with the youth, he went back and told the Caliph of this. The Caliph produced a thousand dirhams and told him to take them back to Abu Nuwas and pay them over on his behalf in order to free him from the debt for which he was being held. When the Chamberlain had done this, Abu Nuwas, on being freed, went to the Caliph and stood in front of him. Khalif told him to recite some poetry containing the words, O loyal servant of God, what is this? Who here is to obey, he said. That's the end of night 339. Hmm. No.
no answer. Yeah. Hmm. Night, 3.30 in the 